So let's talk about the fact that if you say anything that is remotely edgy these days, there's this deep worry that you're going to get canceled, that people online are going to come after you, and then they'll come after your advertisers. Now, listen, it happens to us on the show all the time. People are constantly you know, beating us up. This ha- I trend approximately once every three weeks, I think, as, as much yep. as the algorithm will allow me to trend on Twitter. But at the same time, uh, the, the real fear is that eventually these folks will mobilize against advertisers, against paying customers, uh, and then it'll kill your business. So how do you navigate that minefield? It's really hard. Uh, you know, I've, I'm proud that I don't think Barcel has ever really be, been beholden to which way the wind is blowing, the political climate. If you have a real fan base, which we do when we've cultivated over almost two decades, it allows you to withstand that. Because I know, and I've known this for a long time, if I went to our readers, who have been a lot of them for a long time, and said, listen, we either have to cater to what the advertisers want, where we have to be us, but you may have to pay more, and we may have to come up, may have to buy a T-shirt, pay model. I know what our crowd would say. So it does not bother me that way because our audience is real, and we just stay true to ourselves. The second you let advertisers dictate what you do or you beholden to them, you lose your voice. You're kind of dead. So that, that's been what's allowed us to stay true, um, basically, to who we are. So one of the things that you've been doing is you're out there really helping out small businesses in a way that nobody else is. And that's been an initiative since COVID. Uh, So what gave you the idea that you were just going to step into the breach and you were going to just help out these small businesses that have been destroyed by COVID? Yeah, so it it was towards, I think it was around December when I started this. And basically, New York City shut down indoor dining again. And, you know, as somebody who started a business and can certainly identify with how much work it, I mean, Barstool was my work's life. I spent 10 years before we made any money. I just couldn't imagine not having that decision. So as I'm prone to do, I went on a rant and put it on Instagram. Uh, and then somebody challenged me, like, hey, Big Mouth, instead of just talking about it, why don't you do something about it? And that was the initiative. It was like, all right, we like to control when we do charity, which we've done a lot of, because I don't necessarily trust everybody that the money is getting directly to who it needs. So we came up with the Barstool Fund. I put 500000 of my own money in, solicited donations from people I know who may be wealthy, whatever, Tom Brady's of the world, Aaron Rodgers, whoever I may have been lucky enough to you know, form relationships, and to our readers said, hey, we're doing this. If you guys have money to donate, any amount helps. And then we simultaneously said, if you're a business and you just need to bridge this gap, because for a lot of the restaurants and bars, it was all small business, but a lot of the restaurant industry, they just need warm weather. You know, they need to be able to open outside and get things going. Solicit, uh, send in a, a reason what you need, and we'll try to help as many people as we can. So I think we raised about $40 million and, and have helped countless businesses. We started doing FaceTime videos by accident. Basically, the first company we helped, the girl who Liz Gonzalez, who, who helps go through the emails and submissions, it's like, this person specifically said they're a huge fan of you, Dave. Just surprise them with a call. So I did. And when we gave them the money, their reaction was so overwhelming um, that I knew we had to capture it moving forward because that would drive the donations. And then it just kind of took off. And, you know, it was one of those things. It's so obvious that small business was dying because of COVID and that nothing was being done to help them. It was just common sense. But once you actually see the people and just it's everyday like Americans and how much it meant to get, it could be $10,000. Like that's what they need just to get over the hump. It, it, that's what drove it. And in a weird way, there's so much crap that was going on in the country and has been for a little bit. This is something that everybody should have been behind no matter what, because it's just, it didn't matter if you're a Democrat, Republican, if it was a small business owner, we're just helping you get through this thing. So it, it was finally, I think, something that had a positive message. And even though a lot of people don't like me, even the people who didn't like me got quiet for a little bit because they, they'd wait to come How do you out. argue with that exactly? <laughs> yeah, yeah no, right. I mean, yeah. I, you personally helped out one of the, uh, one of the my, my favorite kosher restaurant in Chicago. And I saw that online. I was like, that's the awesome. Deli. Yeah, Kenny, yeah, Kenny yeah. Ziner over there. Yeah. Excellent, excellent Italian beef. It says so that was that was really. I mean, it was cool to see, and I know I can't. Again, you couldn't find a single person who was anti it. It, it did speak to, I, I think, uh, some broader trends with with the treatment of small business in the country. Uh, I mean, you started a business out of nothing. We started a business out of nothing, and it seemed like for a lot of people who were stumping in favor of we need to shut everything down and we need to keep it shut down forever. There are people now who are saying 
we need to keep everything shut down forever, that they just don't understand how small businesses operate or what it means to actually put your life's work into a small business. To them, it's like, okay, well, you lost your business. You just go start a business next year. It's like, well, that's not how businesses work at all. Correct. And, and I said in my rant, and I do believe this, obviously it's easier said than done, but if you told me after 10 years, COVID is going to hit and I lose what I built, I would have been like, I'm going to risk my life trying to save this. To me, this is, I don't want to go work for somebody else. I can't really start over. Like you said, it's not that easy. This is my life's work. I've poured everything into it. I want the chance to save it. And, and I said that from the beginning with COVID and I, you know, as it developed or whatnot, it's not taking anything away from how serious it is or isn't, but I couldn't stand not letting a business owner decide how they want to handle their future. And frankly, in like a restaurant, I know COVID's there. If I want to go into the restaurant, that's up to me. That's how I felt about it. But I just, to not give these people, let them control their own destiny after some of these businesses we helped were around for 40 years, grandfathers, general, it's, it was insane to me and remains insane to me. Well, unless you want to give them money, which we weren't doing. It, it, you know, they weren't, nothing was being done. So that combo, I, I just never understood. Well, so what you're talking about in terms of personal autonomy, you can see why conservatives might be a uh, hundred percent. Right? I mean, this is, a bit, this is a very conservative idea that basically, listen, you get to make your own choices in life. You want to go into that restaurant and risk COVID because you feel like eating there, go ahead. That would be, that, that's, a, that's a you thing. And if you want to keep your business running, then, then you know, go for it. So there is no doubt that there's things that I'll say that will be conservative. Um, so give me I, some on the other side. I want to hear Well, I'm like super socially liberal. So like anything on the social aspect of it, I'm generally in favor. Like, you know, gay, gay marriage and things like that. All for it. All let people, if it doesn't affect me, do whatever you so want. you're a libertarian. I am a libertarian. That's okay. exactly what I am. <laughs> Uh, yeah, socially liberal, financially conservative. So that's where I land. Yeah, join the club, man. I mean, it, well, <laughs> well, to be honest, that's what I'm saying. I think normal people are like, that's how I look at it. Uh, our, our libertarians, mo there's a lot more commonalities. And even like a, an issue, which I don't like to wade into, like Black Lives Matter, for, for example. I think there's a ton of credibility to how African Americans are treated in this country. You look at the Capitol, I think if those are all black people who are rushing the Capitol, they would have gotten shot. Like, I believe that in my heart. So there's racism here. Now, do I think BLM got taken advantage of? There's issues like, well, I think we're going a little too far with it. Yeah, so nothing's as like black and white, no pun intended there, as it seems. So unfortunately, I think a lot gets politicized and you know, things that we should be getting along on, we end up not. But there's no doubt libertarian, if I identified, would be what it is. So one aspect of that libertarianism is obviously you have an app now that's a, a sports gambling app. Yep. Uh, and, uh, and it's getting approved, what, state by state? How does this Correct. process actually work? So, so yeah, sports gambling, exactly like weed, uh, marijuana. It, it, it used to be illegal everywhere except Vegas. And they overturned whatever statute that was and said, this is now a state issue. So each state decides whether they want to allow it and how it will be handled and things of that nature. It's getting passed quickly because the states need money because of COVID and all that. So uh, we are involved in this. And as somebody who grew up loving gambling, it's, a, it's like my dream thing to be involved in. So currently, if you went, we have the Barcel Sportsbook. It's legal in Michigan, it's legal in Illinois, and it's legal in Pennsylvania, and soon probably like eight more states. I hope you enjoyed that clip from the Ben Shapiro Show Sunday special. If you did, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you stay up to date on all our future content.